So both Ernest Jones and Manuel De La Torre are proponents of club-focused instruction? Jones was not only a proponent, but he is likely the originator of this approach to instruction. Club-focused instruction was the result of a personal tragedy for Jones. He was a club pro in England when World War I broke out. In battle, he lost his right leg below the knee. As soon as they would let him out of the hospital, Jones wanted to see what was left of his golf game. Using crutches to walk, he played his first round of golf and finished with only one leg, scoring an 83. Shortly thereafter, he completed 18 holes in 72. Jones was relieved, but puzzled by these scores. Without his right leg, there were so many things that he could not do which were believed to be critical to the golf swing. For instance, without his right leg, he could have no weight shift on the back swing. Nor could he use his legs to drive his lower body forward on the forward swing. This brought him to the realization that as long as he had clarity about what to do with the club, his brain would devise how his body could accomplish that motion. He realized that if it worked this way for him, it could work this way for all players. So, Jones set out to become expert in how the club should move. And as his clarity about this improved, his brain had a clearer picture of what the body needed to do. You're precisely correct. Your reference to a clearer picture alludes to the effect that visualization has. From his thousands of golf lessons, Delatory learned how to harness the remarkable effect of visualization and greatly improve a player's progress at moving the club correctly. What he discovered and science has since confirmed, is that when we visualize a task, the brain will always direct the body in accord with our visualization. So you're saying that what I see in my mind is what I get in my body. I'll think I'll need some help with this. Sure, no problem. Here's a simple way that anyone can experience this thing for themselves. Point your finger out in front of you, close your eyes, and in a moment, I'm going to have you use your finger as if it were a pencil and draw a circle. Notice that no sooner do I mention drawing a circle than you get a mental image of a circle in your mind. Then notice while you're drawing, your only attention will be on the image of that circle in your mind. Now go ahead and try it. Close your eyes and with your finger draw the circle. Now open your eyes. While you were drawing, you had no thoughts of how to move your finger. Your only thoughts were what you wanted to draw. Unconsciously, your brain took care of figuring out how to move your muscles to draw that circle. So this is why if I have the correct mental picture of what the club should do, my brain will make my body move the club in accord with that picture. Exactly. Now let's do that drawing experiment with a small variation. Point your finger. When I have you begin, draw the circle very slowly. When you have drawn half the circle, change the picture in your mind to draw a square. Be very careful to hold the picture of the square while you complete the circle. Ready? Draw. As soon as I started visualizing the square, I started drawing the square. And you're precisely correct. When we visualize the club's motion and hold the image for the duration of the swing, we can be absolutely certain that the brain will have the body move in accord with the picture. And ready? So if I see the pencil making a circle, I don't need to know what muscles I am using. My brain takes care of that unconsciously. And if you see the club moving correctly, your brain takes care of moving the body in accord with that objective. The more you practice holding that picture, the better the brain gets at moving the body to accomplish that motion. How difficult is it to get that picture of how the club should move? Any player can learn it in their first lesson. Can you demonstrate? When a child is on a swing, every link in the chain of that swing moves in the same direction at the same time. The club is swinging when every part of the club 
is moving together in the same direction at the same time. I have a putter with a pencil inserted in the end of the grip. If I swing the head of the club without swinging the grip at the same time, you'll notice that the pencil does not maintain its address orientation between my arms. But if I swing the whole club with the pencil's position relative to my arms unchanged, then the club returns perfectly to the ball as it was when I set up the shot. The only remaining thing is for the swinging motion to be in the direction of the target. So it would be like this, Kevin. The, putter, the pencil would stay in place and the putter would swing like this in the direction of the target. And it's the same motion for chipping and pitching? Yes, in fact, it's exactly the same motion for all the swings when the club ranges from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock. So for club focused instruction, I would make the shot by holding a visual image of the club swinging and swinging in the direction of the target? Yes, exactly. The more you practice holding the image, the better you get at it. And the better you are at holding the image, the better your brain will get at moving the body accordingly. Those are two key elements of practice. You consciously practice the mental visualization, and unconsciously, your brain practices making the physical motion. So with regard to Jones and De La Torre, Jones was the first proponent of club focus instruction, and De La Torre built upon Jones's work? Yes, Jones has written two books. De La Torre has written a book and a DVD. All four of them are available on Amazon. Both Jones and De La Torre have online entries in Wikipedia. Ed, you and I always enjoy talking golf. Thanks for the chat. Kevin, thank you.